<clears throat> oh my goodness, excuse me. It's fine. Everything's fine. Just prepping the stream. No big deal. Mic check one, two. Man, a lot of, a lot of early folks sneaking in. My goodness! Welcome, welcome.
right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness, isn't it an exciting time for us rockfish community folk? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We are going to be getting started right now. I see a bunch of jellyfish in the chat. Oh my. Oh, it's delightful. Absolutely a treat. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen to the official Rockfish Games stream, where I am your host and your guide through all things Everspace 2, Eric Schrader, your community ambassador, your servant, your guide. Mm. Man, I am excited, I am pumped to dive up in here. We're gonna be talking about a couple of little details today. Nothing super crazy, all right? It's gonna be a nice, smooth, chill stream for you all today, much like these beautiful little jellies. Mwah. Mm. Delightful. And uh, yeah, that's that's the way it's gonna be. I do have a couple updates. Uh, we've been working on some iconography and uh, it looks nice, it's pleasant. So we can dive right onto that and show you. Uh, and let me, let me actually, let's do that. Yeah, so this is the game. It's nice and black, good. Oh, there's the loading bar, good, good. Solid start. Victory is nigh. All right. Hello humans, excellent. Everybody's diving in, oh wow. God. Got a lot of chatters today. It's so great to see everybody sneaking back in. Oh, so good. Hello, Mr. Rockfish Games. Interesting title, but I'll I'll take it. I'll accept it. No big deal. Uh, we're so excited to see all the fixes and improvements to Arc 9000 Mining. Good, good, excellent. Good evening, Rock and Stone. Hang on a second. <laughs> good, nice. I love how we're getting excited for the mining update though, so I feel it's appropriate. It's, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> it's definitely isn't uh, Hoxie's, but uh, all right. Let's go ahead and load up our uh, stream safe and get all back in this. Oh man, I think we were flying around. We, we cycled over to the bomber that I had been practicing with. Oh yeah, good, good. Nice load in textures. Oh, nice. And we're right next to some resources. Ah, oh, yes, because we just attempted the Arc 9000 mining. That's what, that's exactly what it was. Also, I want you all to appreciate the fact that all the sounds are working properly. I updated my system, which is basically me writing one extra line of text in my process of setting up the stream to ensure the sound is on. Mmm, isn't that great? Ah, oh, it's beautiful. All right. But yeah, so no Arc 9000 uh, mining at this point in time. But uh, for anybody who's missed the streams and then also missed our Rockfish Recap January edition, which was posted on our YouTube channel like two hours ago, we are gonna be doing these little consolidated videos that cover the month and hit like three major highlights and maybe a silly thing or two. And, you know, just gotta let you guys know how things are going. So for anyone who hasn't seen the mining yet, those, the three of you out there. Uh, yeah, you can just like blast the area where resources are at and you'll start collecting it. Yeah, lots of lots and lots of goods to be gathered. Um, and these are still getting somewhat tweaked and modified. Uh, so they're not like 100% complete. But uh, as you can tell, we're feeling pretty good about the aesthetics, how it's presented in the game space. Um, and it's gonna make, uh, it's gonna change your inventory a little bit and how you're collecting those resources and how you're using them as well is also gonna be something that happens, uh, which we'll talk about in the future. I'm tiptoeing on a line, all right. Uh, but also I, I wanted to show this inventory screen. I imagine veterans are gonna look at that and be like, oh, hey, I see some changes. I see some, I see some differences, just a couple. Just, just just, subtle little things. So um, as I have pointed out previously, we changed some naming conventions around. Again, <laughs> work in progress, it's, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen more, so you will all just know that. Things might not have a permanent name to them, but like, uh, for example, the components, which used to be called tech resources, were changed to not conflict with crystals, ores, I don't have any generic resources, which are literally called resource. We didn't want to have both tech resource and resource. You know, 
hopefully for obvious reasons, so we just changed it to components. These are the ones that are man-made, whereas resources are the ones that you can go and generate uh, by collecting them in the world, right? Cool. So with these tech resources, we've kind of gone through and updated the way that they look. Ever so, it's, it's subtle in some cases, but it gives you a very direct understanding of what they are. A jump core has a little arrow, like you're jumping. Wow! Energy charger. It has a little lightning bolt, like it's, like it's energy. You get it, you understand. I know you do because you're competent and you were able to click a YouTube or Twitch link to get here. Oh my gosh, power cell, same sort of thing. We've got the, just nice little graphics. We're gonna see that on a lot of these components that are gonna generate. Um, and I can show them off as we go, but this is just one little way that we want to distinguish these pieces from one another even further in your inventory so you're not just looking at the same graphic which i believe this the scrap metal uses the the default graphic we didn't want you to just look at all of those and wonder i wonder what resources i have this is a pain in my butt to figure out you know what it what it is that i have and what i can do to organize it um yeah just one of the first steps uh, we're not done with this. There will be more iconography changes, including to these ores themselves. We will be modifying and adjusting them too. Uh, even if it's just like slight color corrections and, and stuff like that. So so lots of lots of little tweaks and updates and uh, cleanups. Cleanups? Cleaning, cleaning up, you know, general developmental things. Developmental, excellent. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. So, uh, and then we also had, this is also something that happened somewhat recently where we changed, um, shoot, I can't remember the naming conventions. We've changed them twice now, but we have mainframe components that you gather and then you build a mainframe expansion from that. So a mainframe component into a mainframe expansion, uh, to keep that separate from all the other things. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> my mother had to help my uh, me click the Twitch link. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I am so glad you guys are having fun at the start of February. Oh my goodness. Some exciting stuff for us coming soon. Coming soon. Oh goodness. You guys are hilarious. <laughs> Goodness. This dude's the craziest son of a gun in a positive way who's trying to sell me unfinished game. I love it so much I bought both games. Well, thank you for your appreciation and uh, also for your patronage. That does go a long ways. I hope that you enjoy the titles. If not, you know, you always have that two hour, you know, return policy. It's just, I mean, it's true, you do have that. Uh, but I do think you're gonna have a good time, especially the more time that you commit to it. Uh, Everspace One is definitely one of those games that, like, it gives more to you the more you give to it. It just, like, it just keeps better and better and better. And, uh, like, even for me, fun little fact, when I first started playing Everspace One, I didn't really get it until, like, the eight-hour mark. Okay? That's a true story. Like, I didn't really get it until the, about the eight-hour mark, and then it just, like, clicked, and I was like, oh, baby! And it just, it turned into something so much more. All right. So, uh, I've got a couple of quests that I need to finish up, and through the course of this, we may be picking up a couple of other new things. We'll see. We'll see what the fates decree. But I know that I'll be picking up a lot more of this Atheum Crystal, because it is bountiful in this region. There we go. And when I say region, I do legitimately mean uh, region. So, like, right now we are in the home turf region um, of Cedo. And uh, I did show this on last stream. It was in the recap as well. But resources that you gather within regions will be indicated on the map. Uh, let's see. We were here. Yeah. So, you can see right down here, you have the resources mined, iron, athium crystal. Uh, you can see here that we're getting athium crystal. Lots of athium crystal over in Cedo. Um, and this is going to help you find what resources you need in order to 
develop things further. You know, which is mainly going to your perks tab and upgrading those. That's, that's exactly what I'm talking about and not alluding to any other uses out of having that style of ability. All right, cool. Let's get this rigged asteroid and a bomber because that makes sense. Probably one of the hardest things to do actually. Bombers are not exactly uh, what you would call the most uh, maneuverable. Where's the other one? Oh shoot, we're not gonna make it, are we? Oh, it's right there! Oh! <laughs> Planned. Give me those resources, please. Thank you kindly. All right, also I want to go plug these into this station. Man, I can't believe that we're back in Cedo and we're still taking on like the quests that we left here, but maybe this is a good representation of uh, a little bit of the level scaling too. Now this guy's level 20, Not, I think that's actually gonna be tweaked, um, but most of the enemies that you're gonna find are gonna be more like this, where it's a level 18. Cedo is always gonna be like the the low level area that you can come back to. But we want to make sure that there's still a challenge and a reward system there so that you're not just getting level one bullcrap stuff because that would suck. All right, so let's grab these power cores, unlock the things. And then we'll start doing some missions. But yeah. We got, ooh, a ship color. Bonfire. I'll take it. This is this is a very long jump, but I'm curious. Igmar, hey, Igmar, how's it going? What a pleasure to have you here. Do you happen to know if Andy fixed the colors? <laughs> I know we had a problem, or no, no, it was, it was the, uh, it was the, the logos. Maybe, all right, I think that we can change our ship color. Uh, all right, never mind. <laughs> we, had a, we had a bug um, with how that was all working. Doesn't matter, because it doesn't affect you guys, so we'll just uh, keep going up. I'm gonna go grab this shipwreck, and I think there's also an Eterna Bypass over here in the corner, which I haven't gathered yet, so let's go grab those things. And we'll look at a couple more of the items we picked up because the, you know, I can argue, oh, there's another power cell. Five more, in fact, that's, that's very pleasant, actually. Uh, we're gonna go check this corner. Ah, we have not received it yet. Good, good. Wait a second, what was that? Oh, yes, it's it's rich baromite. Ah, fantastic. Excellent. That's a, that is a resource fan favorite right there, I believe. <laughs> rich baromite, poor baromite's cousin. Yeah, something, something like that. All right, let's get the flying duchess in here. Hello. Ah, hello there. Take a look at my stock. Yes. Yes. As I bump into your ship, no big deal. All right, so let's uh, take a look at the shop and hopefully <clears throat> not uh, accidentally reveal anything we're not supposed to, you know, because that would be really bad. Um, also just trying to check out, see, okay, yeah, so we got, we do have a couple more uh, items with like little graphics on them. Camouflage array has the, the dot things around it, the little circle things. We've got the targeting system that has like a target lock on it. Uh, I feel like that does, in fact, make sense. Yeah, so we're going to see lots of little updates. Like, every single one of these components is different. Every single one. Um, so there might be ones that are, like, similar in color. Uh, for example, you know, we look at the targeting system and the jump core. They both have the orange on them, right? Uh, but you'll even see, like, the front of them is too. Like, the energy charger has, like, bars on the front. Whereas, like, the power cell is just, like, this glowy bit that's contained behind a metal plate. You know, there's there's more than just that side slapped onto it. Uh, 
There's a little bit distinction between them, so you can really iron out and determine what is what. Important. Very important. Okay. Uh, so let's sell some stuff that we don't need ever. Um, actually, let's let's scrap stuff. Probably gonna use this. <laughs> <laughs> um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Just cleaning up my inventory. We're gonna dismantle these things. Then we're gonna sell a couple of these and a couple of these. All right, we'll sell all those. You guys can probably see my methodology for whenever I get to uh, selling. I always dismantle all the weapons and I sell all the consumables. <laughs> And then I just, like, hang on to everything else. Uh, that's just kind of the way that I go about it. We're gonna cycle in the Executioner. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dismantle the Gosh Cannon. I'm confident enough. It should be fine. Famous last words. Uh, and then we're also going to... Oh, yeah, we can get energy orbs up to the next level. That's always good. Energy orbs are really stinking powerful, uh, actually. So, all right, cool. And then some more scrap metal. We'll keep looking out for scrap. That should be easy enough to find. Cool. Kite Nebula. Well, maybe we need to go back there to destroy some stuff. All right. Oh, ship colors. Ship colors. Guys, we're gonna change our ship colors. We're gonna look at it. Just with the new one that we got. Don't forget about working class Baramite. Oh my gosh, you guys. <sighs> Mobile home base go is kind of like one, isn't it? Just a little bit. I mean, you can't get to your your uh, your inventory storage at your home base, can you? That would be pretty dope, wouldn't it? All right, so let's uh, go ahead and uh, ship colors. That's what we're gonna do. Custom style, we don't have any conditions, good. Want to hover over these to make sure they haven't changed at all <clears throat> for any reason whatsoever. All right, cool. Let's change this one because it's ugly, I, like embarrassingly bad. Yeah. So let's let's change that. So let's see. We just got bonfire. Might be a bit too much. Wow. All right, hang on a second. We're gonna. We're gonna neutralize these other colors first, okay? We're gonna we're gonna backtrack a little bit. See, this is starting to look a little bit more decent. Um, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go for like a, a little bit more of a crisp looking ship, I think. Uh, maybe something like this. Something like that. I'm happy with something like that. Maybe give it almost like a, like a standard metal look, like it's unpainted in parts. Energy orbs, is this witchcraft? Be honest. Nah, it's gamification. Chrome and hot pink, please. I don't think we have a hot pink at the moment. Yeah, we don't We don't have the hot pink unlocked. We don't have the hot pink unlocked, I'm sorry. My apologies. <laughs> um, let's see, we are, that's a little too gray. We could also maybe go darkness. Mm, I want to go bright. We're going to do something like this. I don't like the web. It's not it's not generating the effect that I was going for. So maybe what we could do mm, I promise this isn't the whole stream. We're not going to spend ages in here customizing. I just want something different. I'm sure you can all understand that. None of these other colors are going to satisfy that I mean, I know we just got the red, but... Mm -mm -mm. No, mm. Yeah, I'm thinking too much about it. Okay, so we're gonna go with uh, something like... Just like this. We're gonna go super plain, but then with like just the, the subtle red highlights. Just subtle red highlights. Transparent? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Eric is famously good at Bummer. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. I appreciate it. 
Uh, Cyclops is your favorite ship. Yeah, no, a lot of people reference a sea turtle and how it looks. I, I think that it's great. Um, so much so that it could be fun to like make it look like a sea turtle. Uh, but mm, temptation is going to be evaded for now. For now, we're going to go a much more standard style here. Um, oh, we don't have red? We don't have a red emissive. Fine, we'll just use yellow emissive lights with our red highlight. Oh, how frustrating. <laughs> but we'll just go like this. Just nice and plain today. Nice and plain. There we go. Very good. So you'll quickly tell when my ship is damaged and needs help. I'm not going to worry about that stuff over there. So let's fly around. Let's do some missions. We still have... Oh my goodness, we still have a, a number of side missions to complete. One of which I believe is the good, the bad, and the... Whatever. So we'll do that. Or a Goliath Frog. That's clever too. Goliath Frog, Sea Turtle. Alright, I see where you guys are going. The only color acceptable is pitch black. Give in to your 13-year-old self. Oh my gosh. I never really had like a, I never really had like a goth phase. My wife sure did. <laughs> oh, I've got some pictures that if I were to show, she would murder me. Oh goodness. I never had a goth phase. It's never me. I was never angry at, at everything. <laughs> Let's take out some, some dudes. Level 18s, level 19s. I still think they're a little too high level for uh, for where we're at with the game, but whatever, it's fine. We're not gonna worry about too much about that because level uh, balance is absolutely still a work in progress since not all the locations are available, guys. Uh, that also includes like the player experience gains and stuff like that, so um, yeah. So if you're concerned about where that's at in conjunction to the whole game, don't worry about that. Think about it in terms of what's available to the game right now whenever you're leaving that style of feedback, because that actually is far more applicable than if you're like assuming, oh, there's gonna be like, in the case of this, eight systems and how I'm progressing. Uh, we know, we know. We, that will absolutely be adjusted accordingly. Right, let's uh, fly way too fast over here to trigger this mission. <laughs> but it really was way too fast. Hi again. I noticed that you put out a job request. Ah, hello. I haven't seen you in a while. And yes, you are correct. This time the job is about Bloodstar. You have heard what happened to them. Oh, this is a different Depends. one. Depends. Something new? They've disbanded. Their boss was taken out by some maverick upstart. I would very much like to shake the hand of whoever that was. Whoever it was might prefer to keep it on the lowdown. Anyhow, with Bloodstar falling apart, there are other parties interested in stripping the abandoned stations for whatever they're worth. Specifically, a certain databank somewhere around Palimon, which is being sought by a client for a high price. I'd do the job myself, but it's a treacherous undertaking. Some old Bloodstar haven't quit the area just yet. Scavenging stations is kind of a pastime of mine. Simply point me the way. You'll be looking for a sizable databank. If you find and return the particular one we need, I will split the bounty with you 50-50. Uh, I'll be doing most of the footwork here, right? And I have the contact. You won't be able to sell the package without me. Transfer me all the info you got, and I'll look into it. Perfect. So yeah, this is a, this is a mission that was added. It was either in the, I think it was the Kait Nebula update, actually. Um, with more story pertaining to the Bloodstar. I think this, will be, this is a great little side mission to go through. Just to hear more about them and how things went down um also um, i feel like there was something else i was going to do oh super gel it's got like a little drop on it look at that just trying to find all like the different components and show you hey look at this tiny update on each individual component it's important okay this is fun for me. I'm sure it's fun for you guys. Those distinctions, it's, it is important. It like legitimately is. 
It'll be even more important when components actually do things. <laughs> ah, man! All right, let's uh, <clears throat> send all of this stuff back to home base. Oh! Our home base storage is full? I guess I'm being a little too hoardy, I guess. Uh, all right, well, that's fine. I also just realized I don't have a secondary weapon equipped. Is this true? Oh. Yeah, because we changed to... We changed to bomber. We have three secondary weapon slots now. Oh my gosh. That's that's silly. Let's uh let's do this really quick. Oh hello, iron. I could tell that was iron just by looking at it. Isn't that nice? Isn't that a convenient feature? Not the most effective weapon at mining. Let's uh let's use the beam laser instead. Oh yeah, much better. Cool. I'm sure most of you are picking up that a lot of the updates and improvements that we're doing um, alongside this mining and trading sort of update has a lot to do with visibility. It has a lot to do with you understanding what it is you're collecting, where you collect it, how you're cataloging it, because those distinctions are, I mean, they're rather important, right? Even from a standpoint of just iconography, like it's it's very much needed. So uh, that's a big chunk of that phase that we're moving into. Just that nice little bit of visibility, and uh, yeah. So let's go find some blood star. Pelamon's wound, I believe, is where we're heading. Look at look at all these missions that we haven't done. Oh my gosh! Jeez. All right, all these are gathering dust, uh, quite literally. <laughs> but um, um, so yeah, I think we'll. That's what we'll do. So let's start off with Siren C. We haven't even been to Cedo Orbit. Jeez. Goodness. The face of someone waiting for the dialogue to finish. Yeah, honestly, what I could have done, what would have been the smart pro gamer move, Torlak, would have been skipping the dialogue, then pausing and showing the dialogue that I skipped. So then I could just read it so much faster. That would have made sense. That would have been that would have been the pro gamer move. Not much of the explorer type. Uh, in fairness, uh, Medbed, I have been focusing on getting to, like, the later content to showcase that, like, the main storyline and stuff. But, uh, I digress. Are there plans for more finishes and textures? Something like carbon fiber would be really sick for the ship. Um, I know that's been an idea that's been, uh, tossed around, uh, Denny's. But it's not a priority right now. We still have a lot more ship modules to build. The wings, the bodies, the engines and we're working on another ship. Um, lots of lots of things like that we want to get out the door first. Once we have, you know, a big portion of those elements covered, then yeah, absolutely. We'll we'll look into seeing if we could do more textures and stuff like that. In general, I think the team agrees that would be cool. Is it necessary? No. So it's not it's just not something we're like working on. Scrap metal, cooling unit. Cooling unit looks like that. Oh, it's got a snowflake. Oh, adorable. You like the new mining so much more? Oh my gosh. Whew. Camoflora, like, oh, I, I am immensely thankful we have moved into this new direction. Um, which, I mean, we had this new direction from a long time ago, I will say that. Um, but, you know, as you're going through development, you're not 100% sure you're going to get to all the really super cool, elegant details and touch-ups that you want to hit. I am so thankful we prioritized this and uh, are making it happen because, oh my gosh, yeah, I, I completely agree. I think it looks great. I'm, ex 
excited to see more. Okay. Now I just have to remember how to do this. Oh my gosh. We've got pipes. We got things to follow. One shield generator down. Follow the pipes. Excuse me, Desbrez. One more to go. Also hoping to get some Bloodstar gear, so uh, kind of glad to be doing this mission. Like a glove. Is beyond retrieval. Yeah, this thing's trashed. Bloodstar! Yay! <laughs> oh, what a noob. Get wrecked. All right. Oh, we got a repeater. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, let's just let's just immediately equip that now. Yeah, I mean, it's not nearly as powerful as the Executioner, but dang it, it's fun. And I like fun. Oh, yeah. That feels, that feels really good. Oh, that doesn't do any damage. What am I doing? There we go. The prospector, okay. Into the debris. Oh no, I flung him out into space. Dang it. All right, we gotta, we gotta go catch him. Actually, you know what, come here. Come here again. Come here, thank you, all right. Still not dead, oh my gosh. This guy. There we go. And a catalyst. Nice! Oh my goodness. Probably not nearly as good, but I'm going to take it anyway because I want Bloodstar equipment to have a greater chance to drop from any outlaw. So we're going to equip it. Even though it's, you know, slightly less. It's got precision instead of firepower. Eh, eh, eh. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. As we build up our Bloodstar gear, then we will, you know, update things accordingly. It'll be fine. Also, hello. Don't mind if I do. Annihilator virus. Mainframe component. Whee! Combine. We're gonna go with structure. We're gonna go with structure here on the bottom. <clears throat> Nailed it. All right. So now we need to find the other server in the area in Siren Sea. Beautiful. Was there a change to how the dust particles are rendered in flight? It seems more pronounced. Uh, Spoon Knight, that's a fantastic question. I know that there have been some tweaks and adjustments to some visuals, including lighting. Uh, there's been like another pass or whatever it's the technical terms are called. Uh, I don't know, shoot, I need to ask Marco. Um, especially for upcoming locations. So I know that there's definitely been uh, continued work on that front, but I couldn't tell you the specifics of what has changed. I'd, uh, I'd need to poke in and uh, procure that information. ran out. Ooh, another disintegrator? And a superior catalyst. Oh my gosh, we're just we're just upgrading here. Look at that! Straight upgrade. Oh, that's the that's the best. That's the best. Maverick Prime Zapper. Very similar to our current one. Nope, I like ours better. 
Nice. Cool. Enemies in range. Eric really loves mines, doesn't he? Yeah. I really do. This guy, man, like, I wonder if we could, like, throw him into an opponent and explode him that way. That'd be kind of fun. Wow, all these drones are confused. Your, your ship is destroyed. Excuse me. I feel like now is a prime opportunity to talk about how I run out of a dev build that's unstable. And sometimes you might see really wonky or straight weird things happening in the game don't worry so much about that okay we'll get that iron out it's fine it's it's good it's good that we're seeing these in the live stream so as we're passing by we go oh whoopsies and we, we make quick corrections don't worry about it. don't worry about it don't worry about it. it's fine and i'm brock gosh dang it Still not ready to be showcased. It's still not it's still not ready, guys. It's been in the game. Our priority's been on other things. Could I use it? Yes. But no, it's not it's not ready. It's not ready. We'll talk more about more set items in the future. Some bad missile shots, I suppose, but alright, there we go. Man, power of the bomber is rather impressive when you're actually using your secondaries. Can I just say that? This is a difference between previous Eric playing the bomber to uh, current Eric. So any of any of you guys out there who are using the bomber and you're not using the secondaries, man, let me tell you what, you are straight up doing it incorrectly. <laughs> All right, is the server in here? No, this is the other thing. Wait, no, it is here. Perfect. Found one of the server locations. Hive, can you run a scan to see if this is the one we're looking for? The drives are completely scrambled. This cannot be the one. Uh, best keep looking then. All right, best keep looking then. So we are all done in this area. I am gonna go over here because I think there's also a hidden container. You have the option to gain distance rather than meet head on. Is this the site with the secret? Mm, I'm gonna guess and say no. There's a, gotta be another one nearby. It's always good to investigate shipwrecks. So that, it's it's strange watching your streams. Watching you guys stream. You see, like, little points of interest, and you're just like, oh, yeah, that's a thing that happened, and I'm just gonna go do this other thing. Like, why, why aren't you investigating the thing that happened? Why aren't you looking at the very clearly handcrafted environment with point of interest happening? Because when you do explore these sites, like, you can discover things. Siren Sea has a number of them here. I think, I think this is actually one of them. Uh, yes? Maybe? Yes, no, maybe? It's not. That would have been way too easy and convenient if that had been the case. Or maybe I've already scrapped them. I'm not sure. But anyway, when you see like these clusters of debris fields, there's a good chance you're gonna find stuff scattered about them. You're gonna have a good chance of finding stuff that's important to your ship, to your development, all that, those types of things. And now I'm just lost and we're gonna go to the next spot. All right. There is a shipwreck over there. Greedy, Eric is greedy. I'm gonna go get it. This is a bomber, yes. This is the bomber. It's nice and cozy in here. Oh, whoops. Woo, slow down.
This is also a bug. This should not be level five. All right, let's get out of here. Let's head to the next location, see if we can find some more Bloodstar stuff. What was that? Was that an ancient? Yes. Yeah, uh, story spoilers. <laughs> yeah, there's a thing that happens. Uh, and then ancients are uh, kind of everywhere now. All right, so I see a question that I absolutely want to talk about. Oh, this is good. So Slareen Tetson says, The Heavy in Everspace 1, the gunship, didn't have a regular shield. Will they keep their shields in Everspace 2? So a uh, little bit of context here. So no shields in Everspace 1 and only armor in Everspace 1 looks different from no shields but having armor in Everspace 2. Uh, like a fundamental difference has occurred. So quick conversation about this. Shields protect against energy uh, damage, or excuse me, kinetic damage. Like they completely absorb any kinetic damage that's taken. Armor completely absorbs energy damage. Okay, so it only takes damage from kinetic. And then your hull takes damage from both. Takes full damage from both in Everspace 2. So the need to have a shield to defend against kinetic damage is actually important here. Whereas in Everspace 1, it was segmented differently. It was just energy and kinetic, if you, let's just call it kinetic. It was energy and hull damage initially. So in Everspace 1, you had energy and hull damage. So anything that hit your shields in Everspace 1 did uh, its energy damage to you, and its hull damage did nothing. And then when your shields were down, then the hull damage would apply to your ship. Wait a second, Eric, where does armor come into play? We didn't talk about that. I am so glad that you mentioned that random person on the internet, so check this out. Armor in Everspace 1 was how much resistance your ship had. So the Interceptor, the starting ship of Everspace 1, it starts off with 10% armor. That means any damage you take to your hull is reduced by 10%. The gunship in Everspace 1 starts off with... <clears throat> Um, it starts off with 40, five, 30, Everspace 2, Wiki, Gunship, hang on a second, I've got the deets right here, uh, I definitely haven't forgotten them ever. 35% it just I just remembered uh yes 100% off the top of my head 35% armor and then it builds up from there right um through the perks so very different system very different system also Grendel thanks for updating the wiki you are amazing um so yeah it's great very different though so in Everspace 2, there's some lore elements that are also important to note, like the ships that you were flying in Everspace 1, they were specifically colonial fighters. In Everspace 2, these are augmented, they are modified, they are custom engineered fighters using colonial tech. So you can fly a modified colonial interceptor, a modified colonial scout, a modified colonial gunship, and because they're modified, they have new improvements, adjustments, all those sorts of things, the gunship in Everspace 2 that you are flying about happens to have shields now augmented onto it. It's not much, it doesn't receive that great of a bonus, but it does have them for basic protection against energy, or excuse me, kinetic damage. It really still shines with its armor though. Um, now I know that I'm obviously flying the, uh, the bomber, but you can see here I'm blocking, let, hang on, let me just turn my face off. Get, get out of here, face. All right. Um, you can see here that the armor bonus of the, the bomber is 40%. That's the bonus that it applies to the equipment that we have. So right now we have this nano plating. It provides 100, or excuse me, 100. It provides 1,259 armor that is then increased by an additional 40%, which gives us that total of 1,763. Okay. 
as opposed to our shield bonus, which is a mere 15%. 15%, that's it. Just 15%. And of course, that's different but, uh, depending on which ship you're flying. The heavies primarily focus on armor and hull, and your, uh, your middle class fighters, like your interceptor, your sentinel, your uh, striker, they focus much more on the well-rounded territories and also on shields so that they don't have to bulk up too much on their armor. Uh, and then your lights, they just kind of suck. They kind of suck at everything, uh, <laughs> but they have their little tweaks and nuances like mobility, for example. All the lights are very fast. Uh, okay, cool. So hopefully that kind of helps explain the differences and why it's working now. 825 hours in Everspace 1, fuck, dude, let me tell you what. We modified the gunship so many times. Oh, gosh. We had to adjust, like, its progression system with the perks, like, what's its starting point, what's its end point, how quickly does that need to happen, do we need more tiers, do we need less tiers? Is it... Oh, my gosh. It's... At one point, it did start at 40% armor, I can guarantee you that. But it was changed down to 35 <laughs> but, uh, I digress. Gosh dang, look at all these snipers. I'm glad that we adjusted how they, uh, they function a bit. Otherwise, we'd be having some problems. Also glad that I can do this to throw them into the debris. That was supposed to go into the debris. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's, um, uh, no. No, I don't want to deal with Weber. It was a bad arc shot, I understand. I just, I didn't, it was like a split decision. I'm just going to fire the arc shot because I didn't even want to deal with that. Didn't even want to deal with it. We're fine. We're fine. We have plenty of hole. This, this ship is just a, it's just a, so powerful. I am not worried at all, even with our armor gone. We probably should take out this elite gun. No. There we go. What else we got? Um, yeah, this beam laser does not couple well with trying to take out snipers because it does push you back. I know I've shown that to you all. All right, let's, uh, let's do this systematically. Ah, oh, man, he boosted! There we go. Ooh, a decimator. Hey, hold up. We got the combo. We got the blood star combo, so now we're gonna be doing a lot more damage, so long as we are moving. Let's charge up our energy for a second. All right, there we go. Now, now he's just gonna, he's just gonna melt. Yeah, much better. Much better. <laughs> yeah, that feels good. All right. I didn't even use secondaries. Look at me flying a bomber, not using secondaries again. Bad habits. All right. Let's pick up some stuff. Do this mission. Did we get some... <laughs> Nobody saw that. <laughs> oh, goodness gravy. All right. Uh, oh, yes. Here we are. Some renegade plating. We definitely want to save that, too. Search area, obviously we are seeing some destructibles, so we're gonna fly on in here, break some things. For anybody who's not familiar with the Bloodstar um, set, basically, hang on Hive, hang on, yeah, one second. Uh, basically, whenever you get a set bonus um, with the Bloodstar, the way that this set's kind of designed is to be more uh, a shoot and run, like guerrilla tactics sort of fire, like 
excuse me, hit and run. Shoot and run? Who even says that? So you're like flying by, you're shooting, and uh, you're, that's kind of like the way that you recover. Um, and so whenever you have three Bloodstar items, so long as you're boosting, your Bloodstar weapons in particular are increased by 25%. Straight up damage bonus. And both of them are more kinetic based weapons. So they're also more, you know, obviously aggressive to opponents that are armored as opposed to shielded. Something like, I don't know, say G and B, uh, for example, but they're not so great against something like um, Okar, any variant of Okar. Any variant, but there's only one variant in the game. You're right, there is right now. Excellent. Um, let's see, we also have, uh, their armor also is uh, repairs a lot more if you are taking out GMB or Okar when you kill them instead of just a standard ship. So 30% repair per GMB or Okar unit kill. <laughs> So it makes you want to play a little bit more deviously, right? Fun! Also, a wiring kit! It's got a little plug graphic. Duh! Adorable! Adorable! Oh, I missed this comment. Beard Dunn said, lights have mobility, so the only class we're playing. Gotcha. Dude, oh man. Like, up top, high five. I love it. Uh, Everspace One Scout is the only ship. That's the only ship that actually exists. All the other ones, nope. Garbage! They're terrible! Why would you ever fly? <laughs> Love the Scout in Everspace 1. Does take some getting used to, though, because it's it's made of paper. Uh, and if a fell breeze uh, crosses the starboard, it just, it just crumples. It, it's it's uh, rather... <clears throat> uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Alright, so let's see. We have... We got some things. However... I am reading some curious file details on a previous transfer to a new location. I'll keep looking for more servers. Ouch. Cool. So we're going to find some stuff in here before we zip on out, uh, because I haven't done this little side mission. Side mission. Uh, location challenge yet. Let's do it real quick. Low mobility with an unstable power core. This should go fine, right? This should be fine. Yeah, no problem. Easy peasy. Bulletproof container. Delightful. Absolutely delightful. Let's just go ahead and head on out of here without any uh, problems and showcase just how uh, great it is and we can navigate with the bomber itself. Absolutely flawless. Not a scratch. That's what shields are for, right? <laughs> All right, now let's head on over to the last one, Palemon's Wound itself. Wrap up these mission details, kind of. The first part of the mission details. Scout Never Space One is cheating easy mode. Oh, dude. Hang on a second. Are you playing on easy mode with the scout? Because that's that's not even fair. That's that's rude. If you're saying scout is easy mode, okay, yeah, no, I can, I can get behind that. I can get behind that. Come here. Let's try and do a combo. Yeah! Honestly, I just want to get the anti-missile drone out of the way so that I could, uh... Oh, there's more? Oh, shoot. All right. Anti-missile drones. Bomber's least favorite friend. Friend? Not friend. Okay, hang on a second. There we go. That's what we wanted to do. Neutron membrane. Let's just see what it looks like. Why not? Oh, it's like a little atom. Eh, sweet. Sweet. All these cute little graphics. Ah. Oh. They're making me so happy. 
Mine combos could be really good too. Actually, I could, I could, can we make some mines? Hang on a second. Have we, have we, uh, yeah, we can make standard mines. We could make uncommon mines. Okay, sweet. Uh, so let's see, do we wanna do corrosion mines or standard mines? What do you think? I'm so glad that I've been just scrapping everything so I can make this on the fly. We gotta go corrosion mines, right? Gotta go, cor Tiberius says standard. Oh, gosh, really? That probably makes sense. It does a lot more damage. That overtime effect. Imagine having no time to 100% locations because you're thick. <laughs> nice. Nice. Love the set bonus. Are there others besides Bloodstart? Hazmat zero. As of right now, uh, no. Um, I just, I just, hang on a second. I just wanna, I just wanna look at the logo and what's underneath it right now, just to like, it's okay. Everything's fine. Everything's under control and where it's supposed to be. Uh, yeah, that does, that definitely a work in progress. Um, that's gonna be the excuse that I go for. Uh, but rest assured, as we are delivering new elements into the game, uh, we are also bringing new factions and respective set items, as well as set items that aren't even faction based. Um, all right, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Penumbra and Umbra, okay? All right, I, we're not gonna crack open the whole discussion about it, but I want to let you guys know that what you've seen of it, like me mousing over it, okay? This is not a new faction, okay? It's not a new corporation. There are also set items that simply work in tandem just because. Just because, that's all. So there's also those style of set items that will be introduced into the game space, not just faction-based or manufacturer-based or anything like that, but also just their sets because they want to be. They just work with each other and that's fine, that's great. Okay? That's all the more I'm saying on freaking Umbra and Penumbra. Cool. Good. No, we don't have Antumbra. No. No, I know that there's... I know there's that third one. I knew somebody was going to bring it up, but nope. So it just works. Can somebody ban Tiberius? <laughs> Yes, it just works. Oh my gosh. Ugh. People are gonna be sad when what gets fixed? Synchro Pulse, Gunship. Oh, actually I should, I should show you how that's been fixed for anybody who's missed that update. Uh, yeah, right now the, um... oh, your shield's not showing. That's, uh, that's unfortunate. But, um, what was I gonna say? I can't even remember. Guess it wasn't that important. Oh yeah, Synchro Pose. Uh, so weapons that fire out of all, um, out of all hard points at the same time, those were not operating as they were meant to be operating uh, from the gunship that fires all hard, like has two more additional hard points, right? Um, so the gunship, I really need to swap to a gunship to explain this more. Uh, for now, just look at this bioprocessor and the little DNA thing. Oh, so cute. Adorbs. Fantastic. What perks can we get? Repairs? Yes. Energy? Okay. We'll go with more repairs, it's fine. What do we got for you, Tureen? Storage size! Oh, yes, I'm a hoarder, please. We're actually maxed out. We need to increase this. All right. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, Gunship was firing out of all its hard points at the same, or not at the same time. Yes, they were at the same time for synchroed weapons, for weapons that fire out of all hard points at the same time. Um, but then in addition, the ability of the Gunship, because it has twice as many hard points, it's basically firing twice as fast. So it was both firing twice as fast and also firing from two additional hard points, effectively giving it four times the amount of damage output that was possible. Definitely a bug that has been fixed. That has absolutely been fixed. 
So now whenever you're picking up a non-synced weapon, ones that fire um, <clears throat> not all at the same time, <laughs> wow, words are eluding me at the moment, um, then it's going to fire at twice the fire rate. But if you pick up a synchronized weapon, instead of it firing twice as fast, now it's basically doubling your damage output because, I mean, you're firing out of two additional hard points. So yeah. Got him. All right, let's, let's actually explore this. I was talking and I couldn't explore at the same time. Man, life is hard, I'll tell you what. Try to talk to this online community and play a video game at the same time. What do you want from me, people? <laughs> All right, let's uh, destroy this. Get this debris out of the way. Hack the terminal. The memory has been wiped. Yeah, by the archive admin. When was that? The timestamp is unreadable. Let's see what the other servers have in store. There are More no more server cool. locations. At least not highlighted by the tree. Huh. Wasn't there anything you could glean from those other drives? There were some remaining files of historical interest dating to the time of the Ocar incursion of Palipa. I came across numerous entries authored by the Archive Admin. Some written decades apart. Could it be the same person? The author states that they arrived in Palimon as a mere miner, but wishes they had stayed on Hector's base, where they felt more at home. I do have a record of a mining station in the vicinity of Eculus. Here are its coordinates. Well, it's a long shot, but maybe that's where they transferred the data bank. Let's check it out. Neat. So head on over here, finish up this mission. I like this side quest a lot. I think it's a fun one. Also gives you a lot of opportunity to find a higher level blood star. Oh, I missed a question, whoops. All right, let's check this out. So from MS, hello, I have a bit of a question. Does this game have a story mode or something like campaign? If so, how long is it? So basically the way that you will experience the game is through the campaign. It is a single player, narrative driven, uh, looter shooter in an open world uh, RPG environment. The campaign is set to be approximately 20 to 30 hours long. That's if you're just like one shotting the campaign itself. But at any point in time, based on how we've designed this world, you will be able to branch away from the the pathways that are assigned to you and kind of venture into your own territories, discover your own events, uh, pick up side missions and jobs, uh, and kind of forge a different path than what the campaign uh, directs you towards. The campaign will be the ultimate thing that uh, drives your character forward because it is a narrative around your character. So it's not something where you you can create your story. I don't want you to think like that at all because that's not the case. Uh, but it does allow you to progress that story in the way you decree. In the end game state, when you're done with the story, um, everything will absolutely be opened up by that point in time, far before it, in fact. Um, that might be saying too much. Whoops. Anyway, you'll be able to then go do whatever you want whenever you want however you want and don't and aren't assigned to have to do anything specifically Woo! all right all the better i suppose i feel like adam responded to me with that statement <laughs> it's kind of great all right so every system we see right now is supposed to be done at release a curious question, but a good one. Let me clarify that. So on this map, you can see eight different systems. We are projected to get seven of them done. I believe that's our wording. Hang on, let me check. Let me double check our official frequently asked questions. 
because we would love to make eight systems right out of the gate. Um, okay, we have at least, what you can expect is at least six for the 1.0 release. You can expect at least six star systems planned for 1.0. At least six. So right now, obviously, Cedo, Union, Zarkov, Kite, Nebula are available. We're working on Drake. Um, confident that we will get six done. All right? So uh, that is the information that we have shared at this time. All right, so let's dock at this gas station. Actually, we need these the scrap metal for, uh, or wiring kits, rather for our perks. Let's go pick that up. Neat. Now let's go sit down. Sit down. We're gonna have our ship sit down on the station. That's, uh, <laughs> excellent. If the trader was right and the data he's looking for still exists, this place is our last chance of finding it. All right, Hive. Hold tight. I'm heading in. Who are you? How did you find this place? Don't move. I've got my crosshairs trained right on you. I thought it was a simple question. Why does everyone have to be so jumpy nowadays? Come now, relax. There's enough calamity at play as it is. Are you referring to the disintegration of the Bloodstar gang, or the general state of the DMZ? The former, obviously. Damned Bolton. It was bad for a while already, but it got worse once he took over. Bolton? People called him Gas Mask. Not that anyone would call him that to his face, of course. He was disfigured, bitter. Oh, yeah. Gas mask. Doesn't quite earn my sympathy. What would you know about any of this? You've encountered him? I don't want to get into it. I'm just looking for a particular data bank. I'm working on the assumption that someone brought it here ages ago. Whoever Archive Admin was. Yes, that was me. I suppose GNB hired you in order to ascertain the remaining resource value of the region. We mined on Polymon during the war. We knew the risks, but then GMB failed to extract us from the encroaching battlefront. When the dust settled, the only ones left were the few of us who hid deep in the shafts. The databank you're looking for is more than simply log records and resource locations. For GMB, it's a historical stain on their reputation that needs to be erased unless they're ever taken to account. For us, it's where we came from. It's who we are. Or what's left of you. Bloodstar's finished. You seem pleased enough about it. You know, we weren't always on the wrong side of affairs. I was the gang historian, but my job was more than keeping files. It was onboarding new recruits to our code. It was keeping the continuity. Now, there are none left to carry the flame. Some are joining new gangs and leaving their old allegiances behind. Some trying to flee the DMZ altogether. All that remains are the stories. Take the data bank. I'm not equipped to resist you in any case. But keep in mind, the drives are antiquated and cumbersome, incompatible with newer technology. The whole data bank needs to be physically removed from the back of the station. I only want to live out the rest of my time here in peace. That is quite a heavy tale. Thanks for sharing it. Just get out of here. I've done all I can. My life's work is over. Hey, uh, take care out there. Whatever. All right, so there was a lot there to, to digest, and I'll let you kind of mull over that as I answer some other questions in the chat, because I did miss a couple. And Slobodin, uh, I'm going to hope that I pronounced the name correctly. It's totally fine that you're asking a lot of questions. That's great. Does finishing a side quest or a mission bring only credits or also parts, weapons, and stuff? It can bring all assortments of things. It can also bring other special things, uh, too, uh, in the future. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, also, I want to address one other thing. I love you guys having fun with your love for Deep Rock Galactic. Um, I see that uh, coming in, you know, with, with your little suggestions on Easter eggs. That's all fun and great. Just keep in mind, while we are developing Everspace 2, 
Um, you know, we, we love certain games and certain movies and books, and we will make subtle references and nods to those things because, you know, it is within our right as our creative freedoms allow us to. Uh, granted, we will not be doing any direct sort of things where it's like, you know, going into critical error compromised, I'm using another person's IP territory, right? Like, we're not gonna, we're not just gonna, like, plug in stuff like that. So, that's great you're having fun with that. I think that's cute. I think that's delightful. Um, just know that there's a very low chance of seeing a drone named Steve or Bosco, or, you know, running into a, a, a miner named Carl. That's not, probably not gonna happen. Uh, all right. Uh, all right, so let's get a couple more uh, questions answered too, because I see another question that was, so the story won't span every system. You may end up having systems just for side questing. Uh, yeah, so uh, there will be a little bit of um, term important content gating, content gating, all right? This is something that's used in a, a number of open world games where you're only allowed to explore a certain region or territory until you can move into a much larger space generally. So uh, whenever you start out, for example, uh, and many of you know this, like you start off in Cedo. once you finish Cedo, you have access to all of Union and in the current game space, in the current game space, once you finish the main mission in Union, you'll have access to Zarkov and then access to the Kait Nebula. Um, <clears throat> that will very likely change, probably, maybe. It's just a guess, I don't know things. So, um, but as the world opens up, you'll be able to go and do whatever you want, however you want, right? As we mentioned before, while the story is driving you to go to certain locations and doing specific things. While I don't think we will have an entire system devoted to just entirely side quests, I think that that could be a very healthy thing to have. So yeah, definitely it's a, a freedom of your choice to navigate to certain regions and locations as opposed to us making the entire game linear. You have to go to A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then you can go to H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Checking a couple more questions before we'll dive right into this quest and finish it up. Um, doo -doo -doo. The guy talks too much. I mean, he's sad. Bloodstar used to be this great thing. And it's just, it's been stained across the stars with all these morons leading it, like gas mask. So no destroying the Enterprise with our Death Star Mark III. Yes, Tiberius, you've got it. Correct. Not going to be applicable in our game. Not going to be applicable. More new crafting system details when? When it's ready! Mm, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the question! For sure. All right, let's keep going. We gotta find the cloak containers, get the data archive. It's just right over here, it's nothing, it's nothing too crazy. Open, and data archive. Removing it now. Put me up Plop. a random section, Hive. Bloodstar code, updated 07033045. Care, camaraderie, coexistence. The Bloodstar Oath is amended to include squadmate responsibility for widowed and orphaned members. Okay, that's interesting. So they did have some form of social code. Pull me up another. 1712-3048. A crew of 50 found malnourished ap- Hang on one second. Just picking up some stuff. Been right. forced from Union. Two weeks rest and recuperation offered. A number already expressing interest in joining our ranks. Well, they can't have been all that bad if they were rescuing starving crews. Wonder where it all went wrong for these guys. 
Let's try another. 30, 11, 30, 55. Ballad Arms Bolton again challenges the chief for leadership. The council intervenes to remind Bolton of the electoral process which has existed since the gang's founding. Bolton is reprimanded, but remains defiant. Hmm. It sounds like a slide into a dictatorship. I reckon we did bless our favor by ridding them of gas masks, even though it meant their undoing. Hive, I need to reconsider this. I mean, what's GMB gonna do with all this but mine it for resource data and erase the rest? We have a choice here. Return the data to the old-timer and let him finish his life's work, but cash it in for a healthy profit. This is Clygon, by the way. It's like one of my favorite looking minerals. All right, let's see. Uh, oh, there's more right there. Goodness. Good enough. We're gonna pick up the rest of the stuff uh, in this area, and then we're gonna take the goods back. Oh my gosh, we ran into a mine. Never. I would never do that. Woo. Good thing this ship has some armor, right? Yikes. Okay, we're gonna just get rid of the shield. Grab this. We got one more container to find. We'll just go back and finish this mission first and also sell some stuff. Get rid of stuff. So he's gonna talk a little bit more and then I'll answer some more questions. You've returned. Yeah, I've had a change of heart. I think you should keep the data bank. Let's just say I might have learned a new appreciation for history. Tell me something. I've been wondering, are you him? What do you mean? Come on, there aren't many fighters out here who could have picked a fight with Bloodstar. So are you the guy? Is this for the record? On the final page. Yeah, I'm the guy along with Dexter Bashar who killed Bolton. Gas mask. We were taken hostage and tortured. Dexter Bashar. Be sure you get that name right. Nasty business. I was never keen on the hostage taking. Bolton was the reason it all went to hell. Maybe one day you'll be able to rebuild Bloodstar how it used to be. No, no, it's just a story now. You've shown heart by helping to preserve it. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Awesome. All right, so... Um, yeah, a lot of new information about Bloodstar being revealed. Uh, this is in your current game space, so, uh, but still. Get on it, Grindle. <laughs> Update all the things. Uh, but yeah, we're having a lot of fun with the lore, as you can tell. Bringing everything together. Uh, let's see if I missed any questions, just to make sure... We are good. Have you tried using nanobots? Bomber doesn't really need nanobots. It just, it has lifesteal. Just restores everything. So check this out. So, uh, where's, where's, where's the thing? Expertise, there we go. Full repair per whole damage dealt is 15.5%. Each ship has a special expertise and uh, the bomber just, it restores its own hull. And then in addition to that, as you guys know, and this will <clears throat> probably be adjusted, but the armor plating has a percentage repair per kill as well. It's pretty high, regenerates pretty fast, uh, but in conjunction to this, it's like the reason why I have armor in my holes like at max right now, even though I haven't been using nanobots is because of these two features, which work in tandem. And that can only be increased by the amount of damage you're doing uh, by the skills that you're learning for evasion, all that type of stuff. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Uh, now let's get rid of some things. We could probably use a prime zapper here. Eh, I kind of, I want to keep my blood star stuff. So let's, uh, get rid of that. <clears throat> my goodness, so many things we've collected. I do like the disintegrator, but we're going to get rid of it too. <laughs> Right. 
I just want to keep our blood star stuff right now. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna be stubborn and hang on to all our blood star stuff. Ooh, unlocked a superior. Oh, that's that feels good. And I missed a couple items. Whoops. We're hanging on to that. Wait, do we have two renegade planings? No, we just have one. Okay. All the blueprints unlocking. Oh, that feels good. That feels really good. And then we're going to need to go back to the home base and start fixing things up. Uh, oh, we're getting close to being able to store all the things. Oh, we need more Klygon. All right. All right. Okay. Noted. We'll keep that in mind. All right. All right. Twenty-one shots, Michael. Jeez, you fiend. Okay. What's better, Everspace One, Everspace Two, coffee or pizza? That is a trick question. Absolutely a trick question, because the answer has multiple answers. Also, I'm not the biggest coffee drinker. I'm I'm a bigger fan of tea. I feel like. Uh, that said, I do, um, I do certainly add coffee into beverages. But pizza, man. Let me ask this question: Can can Everspace Two have stuffed crust? It's a valid question. <laughs> Does Everspace One sustain your physical body? Mm. Yeah? Think about it. Think about it. <laughs> oh my gosh. All I'm saying, if I was stuck on an island and I could only have an unlimited supply of Everspace 1, Everspace 2, coffee or pizza, my choice has already been decreed, okay? Alright, just, just point that out there. <laughs> I love Everspace very much. <laughs> but when we're looking at the details. <laughs> Alright, uh, we gotta find this last cloak container and then we're gonna then we're gonna swing on out here. Um we're gonna be playing and finishing up a couple things here the next nine minutes. Um and then we will uh look at some screenshots that Michael procured from Steam itself. Cause there's a there's a there's a separation between our Discord screenshots that were shared and the screenshots that are shared shared over on Steam. There's some amazing screenshots over on Steam. So we're gonna be sharing a, a few of those today. Power cell, baramite, credits. Beautiful. Alright, that'll complete this location challenge, making me feel very good. Excellent. And then we can zip on out of here. I think we're going to go... Man, I need more Klygon, which generates in that location. Maybe we could get lucky and find some more Klygon in one of these two areas. That might make sense, since we found it here, to find it in another location nearby. Everspace One can sustain your physical body if you eat the physical copy of it. Medbed, I hope that your diet does not include eating physical software. <laughs> A little concerned. I'm confident that you're getting your daily amount of iron though. Uh, All right, so quick check on questions, making sure we're good. Maybe you can get a lot of Klygon if you all patch Arc 9000 mining. You guys, oh my gosh. All right, so I think, copper, copper. Oh my gosh, we've been betrayed. What is this? What a sham. We'll keep looking around, it's fine. I like this glowy bit over here. Let me take out these anemones. Poor guys. Not really. Whoa. 
Whoops. Clygon! Hey, I knew it I would I knew it would be here. Because it's in this region. And that's an effect of all the cool new uh things that are happening with the game. It's super neat. Super fantastic. Come here, Clygon. Oh, so satisfying. So satisfying. Copper! Screw you, Copper. I want Clygon. Yes. Yes. All right. Take out some anemones. Let's just see if we can uh, top off the perk. See how... See how effective and pleasant that was? Where it's like, I look at my perks and I see I need the specific resource. Oh, let me check my map. I found this in this region. I haven't gone over to this other part of this region. Explored there, found what I needed. Isn't that so much better than just praying to RNG Jesus that you're gonna get the right drop? Oh my goodness. Clygon is now Clygon. No, stop that. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Now our storage size has increased. We can hoard even more. Yes! Hoard mode engaged. All right, so let's uh, send all the things uh, over to the base. Feels good. Feels good. Oh, yeah. Oh, super nice and clean. Seagro Pulse. It's teasing me, but we're not going to use it. And then we're just going to scrap these two. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nice. I should feel, I feel like this cave is a good spot to like save and close. Let me get the rest of this copper though. And did we miss something? Oh, more copper. Okay. Wonderful. Perfect, nailed it. Perfect. So we'll we'll go ahead and save right here. Just looking out. Uh, save game, stream save. Okay. Done and done. So now we can transition over to screenshots and talking about those. We'll still answer questions as well uh, along uh, the ride. Uh, let me go ahead and start pulling up these things. Um, and so for the meantime, um, we're gonna transition to the next segment. Um, I'm going to take a quick break as well. Uh, I won't be too long, but just as a reminder, you can actually go to a lot of different places to follow us and get information as it's being delivered. I mean, obviously I deliver a lot of information to you guys on these streams themselves, but we just started packaging up our information and we'll be delivering it in monthly packets over on YouTube. So that could be an interesting place for you to go. These little monthly packets. The first one actually went live approximately four-ish hours ago, if my math is right. Maybe my math is off. Um, but it's just a, a rockfish recap of January. You can go watch that uh, while I'm going to sneak out of here for a moment. And then we'll talk about some really cool screenshots and uh, have a, a nice little closure to the stream. Awesome. I'll be right back, guys.
All right, guys, I am back. We're gonna get started here in just a moment. I'm kind of uh, <coughs> consolidating all the things so that this works somewhat fluidly. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Goodness gravy. All right. Here we go. Sneaking on over to the news tab. Welcome back, everybody. Hope that your break was just the most fantastic thing you've ever experienced in your entire life. Um, also note that um, all of these shots, I just wanna make sure it's super clear. All of these shots that we're going through, um, they are from Steam. They could be individuals who've also posted them on Discord and they kind of date back from all over the place. So um, I'm actually gonna have to do this a number of times because the uh, information that I was given um, and the numbers of the each one of these screenshots is, is different uh, with how this information I just received. So sorry about that, but hopefully it won't be too big deal. So, um, but Michael shared a lot of his uh, uh, feedback on why he chose these particular shots that came straight out of steam and if you're out there if like if this one of these shots was yours and you're like oh hey uh this is totally uh my shot you know raise your hand that's totally fine we'll all believe you <laughs> yeah right um and, and we'll just go from there it'll be great it'll be great so this one uh this one is just it's a really nice artsy shot great capture high quality details the spaceship and thruster booster vfx which actually changed multiple times uh you may have even caught that in the trailer that we had for the like kite nebula versus actually playing in it a uh, fun little fact um a backlit planet is in the perfect calm background to let the freelancer fly by shine well done excellent uh is that the right one the knights great catch the high high details of the spaceship and its thruster boost yeah yeah okay cool excellent i think i've got them in order i think i've got them in the right order here so um <laughs> this is gonna be so slightly segmented guys oh my gosh just bear with me as i'm like doing this uh wait wait for it wait for it wait for it. it's like random roulette yeah, no, 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 no. bing oh perfect next one <laughs> So that first one was apparently by Whiskey Dancer. All right, thank you, Michael. Uh, thank you for catching the, the tiles for these. Oh my gosh. But yeah, so uh, next one, we've got this shot and I know I have seen this one before. I'm confident that it was even shared on Discord because I saw it, I was just like, wow. Oh my gosh, what a, what a pleasure to see uh, this shot. Um, this is the hero shot for today's stream as it teases exploration gameplay while being on a space journey. Absolutely, great sense for objects in the fore, mid, and background. Also, the lighting is just excellent. Oh my goodness, like look at, look at the glean. Oh, oof, so, it's so delightful. Given the shot a touch of epic spaceness, solid marketing shot, it truly is. This could, this is, this may have even been used. In fact, my, is this, I think we've even used this shot in our marketing. Is that is that right, Michael? Like, I feel like this is one of those shots that we've... Something similar to this, at least. This this absolutely looks like we had somebody go in and be like, let's set up this shot, let's take it, and use it for this particular marketing piece. Like, that's, that's some pretty high praise there. So, very clean shot on that front as well. Um, so, well done. Haven't used that one before? Okay, nice. Nice. But yeah, I, I mean, like, even just looking at it and thinking we have, that, that gives it so much praise, right? Um, and I love the environmental shots you guys have been taking and sharing the Discord, because you get it. You get it! You're showing that scope, you're showing the scale, right? You're adding things to the foreground and the background to, like, elevate that space that you're traveling through. And it's... So it's so freaking cool. I love the fact that we have photo mode in Everspace 2 and in Everspace 1. Like, can we can we just like all agree? Like it's <laughs> Oh, it's so great. You see a grammar fail in the bottom text? Oh shoot. I uh I thank you for reminding me that I did not update the bottom scrolling text uh this week. Whoops! That's the same text from last week. Uh oh well. Oh, can't, we can't win them all. Don't worry, I'll, I'll change the marquee next week. <clears throat> Excellent. But that's a, I really, I really enjoy this shot as well. It's a fantastic shot. 
All right, the next one we have, not too far away from this one, right there, boom. So good. I love how you're getting like a little preview of the other shots when we do this too. This is great, this is fun. Like what's it gonna land on? Which one are we gonna talk about? Oh, that's good, it's good. So this one is actually by Dark Chaos, which we recently made him a galactic photographer over on Discord. So this might have been one that we picked out. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe we've officially shown it on the stream, but Michael uh, describing this one as well. He, um, the big, the big points here, I mean, it's you know just great space exploration. It goes into that scope and scale we just talked about, the space journey, great sense for objects in the four mid background. Um, uh, the color choice here, the warm orange, yellow, and blue purple complementary colors, pleasing the viewer's eye. The ship in the foreground is an excellent reference for scale and adds a subtle touch of dynamicism to the scene. Would also be a contender for an official Markham shot. Stuff like that. Oh my gosh, so delightful. So delightful. I see another question. Will there be a fetch the space chicken mission? Probably not. Probably not. Apparently, uh, wait, wait, wait. They have found any space chickens? Yeah, we have not found space chickens in the DMZ. That's that's what the messaging should be. Hyperspace 3 has photo mode and the as the only gameplay. <laughs> Everspace snap. That's, uh, that's... <laughs> Woo! Okay, uh, let's keep going. Let's keep going. So our next shot. <laughs> you guys. Oh, I don't have a I don't have a display for this one. Which one is it? Oh, it's that one. Oh, this one. I love this shot. This is a great one. Dude, dude, dude. Up, oh, bing, right here. This one's one of like I I love whenever we get to show off the handcrafted environments and these obstacles that were generated. Uh, like I say, I just said generated, but they're hand they're handcrafted. We had a designer come in and say, I want this to be shaped like that. And while we do reuse some asteroid assets, it's true, you caught us, like many of them. Every location almost has like one unique asset that makes it distinct. And this environment, I, I love how like, even just flying about here, you just have so much fun with whizzing through these spaces. Feels good. It feels right uh, with these close corners uh, surrounding this space that's, you know, just like out in the middle of literal space. Just to keep everything a little bit more compact and interesting and meaningful. This is a signature shot of what Zarkov the Vortex holds for space explorers. The sense of scale and distance is just spot on with lots of little details to discover on the strange asteroid wanting to jump right in the cockpit and check it out. Great environment shot. Couldn't agree more. This is, I don't actually think we've been here yet in our save file. Maybe we have and I just skimmed through it. Woo! Very, very cool. Very neat. I also, like, you can also tell that it's handcrafted in that, like, the locations that are found on the asteroids. If you go to this location, you'll see, like, these tubings. And if you follow along, it guides you through these spaces as well. I think that was a really nice touch on, uh, on our part. I'm gonna just pat ourselves on the back there on that one. But seriously, it's, it's so imperative, especially when you're handcrafting an environment, that the environment is telling a story and it's inviting you in and it's giving you some sense of direction. And I do think that's something that's well capitalized on in this particular zone. You just have to keep your eyes peeled. You have to be digesting the content that you are experiencing. Good, good stuff. Uh, so we're gonna move on to the next one as well. Oh yeah, all right, I know this one. I know this one right here, boom! <clears throat> yeah, the, I, I think we had this one, I think Dark Chaos shared this shot in like the globe format. He took like, Oh, it was an absurd number of shots, like 50 shots or something. Was that right? And he meshed it into a globe. Oh, so cool. Yeah, Mar uh, Marco, thank you for mentioning that, Michael. Marco is our, like, he's he 
he does all the art for the environments and he guys he's he's big brain okay like he understands level design on an otherworldly scale and um very thankful to have him on the team his brilliance is utilized significantly as we are building out these varied spaces um i'm sure that many of you have even noticed like asteroids don't even look the same as you're moving between systems like zarkov i think is one of the most eye-opening locations but uh, you know also um uh kite nebula also has like the more organic st whatever anyway my point is marco you're awesome i love you don't change mm. all right uh so this this one this is the luna mining colony inside of zarkov great for surreal shots Great framing of the planetary scenery, making you wonder what's going on down there. Mm, indeed. The shot captures everything of what we had in mind for this location without spoiling anything. 100% Markham shot. Boom. Another Markham shot. Um, fantastic. Fantastic stuff. This just this makes me so happy. Um, also, for anybody who's just joining the stream, welcome to the Rockfish stream. You are late. Uh, <laughs> But um, also, we uh, we do this every single Friday, by the way, uh, where we stream and we just have a good time, uh, hang out with the community. Right now, you have entered the segment where we are just giving praise to the community screenshots. You might see one of yours show up here. I don't know, but it is amazing to be able to just show these and see how you're all like entering into the game world. It's it is a blast. It is an absolute blast to see how you all are engaged and the perspectives that you are experiencing the game from uh too so cool cool all right next one we have right over here excellent this one arguably my favorite ship right now arguably i don't like the wing type actually i know a lot of people are partial this to this particular wing wing style uh, and you know, yeah, of course, it's very referential of, you know, a Star Wars X-Wing um, with very distinct and clear differences. And if you can't recognize those and think we're gonna get sued, I'm sorry, I don't, I, I can only explain things to you. I can't understand for you, um, but uh, I digress. I still love the Striker. It's so good. Love its close quarter combat style of play. Uh, and this is great because it's a close up shot of the Crosswing fighter itself. Uh, Eric knows the exact name. Oh, oh, did I did I say too much? Am I not allowed to say that? <laughs> oh my gosh, it actually says it. I did not read this first. Let me read this verbatim. It says, Eric knows the exact name and Disney cannot sue us for using a copyrighted name. Back to the shot. Excellent lighting, making the details and surfaces of the ship uh, shine. Great dynamic from the vessels, thrusters, spaceship, money shot. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Oh my gosh, it's hilarious. Michael, we were totally on sync. I should read these before I actually uh, <clears throat> say them though. Anyway, uh, I digress. Such a such a great ship. Such a great ship. So good. X-Wing Striker is the best. All right, all right. Osprey, yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Smallest form factor wings for fitting in stuff. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. And this was by Whiskey Dancer as well. Uh, thanks for that added context, Michael, because I do think it's really important that we give you guys proper praise for these screenshots. Like, holy crap, you guys are amazing. Holy crap, you guys are, in fact, amazing. So next one, a next amazing shot. We've got, we're gonna be filling the rest of the stream with this, but also continue to ask questions about Everspace 2 while we're highlighting these really awesome screenshots. Um, Cause I can, I can answer questions in between and whatnot. Because there's, like, we're not going to get through all of these. We're not going to get through all of these. There, there's too many super sweet shots. Uh, and let's keep having a conversation, all right? Keeping things nice and chill, keeping things well engaged. It's the way to go. All right, so this one. When a freighter goes boom. Technically, it's a drone carrier, but I'll let that one slide, Michael. All right? Don't, don't mess up next time, okay, boss? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, who doesn't like explosions in space? Mind-boggling, we know. Joking aside, perfect timing of capturing the bright moment of the multi-stage explosion of a capital ship with debris flinging around. Note that the attacker is not on screen, enlarging the, the entire scene beyond what you can see. Great action from Kafinko. Kafkinko. 
Oh my goodness. It's freight our drones, so... <sighs> Alright, you got me on a technicality. Alright, I take it back, Michael. Uh, you know everything, I'm sorry. I am, I am but the learner, you are but the master. Okay. <laughs> But no, I, I actually, I really like that shot as well, just with how the, as Michael puts it, like the, you see the attacks coming from off screen. It's great. That's a great alignment shot. Very, very good. Clean and delightful. Also, as Nightbot keeps exclaiming, um, also just note, there is a free demo for our game. If you have not experienced that which is Everspace 2 yet, and you are, you know, you're concerned about costs or, uh, any sort of clarity that we haven't provided along development, which I feel like is actually impossible with how much I blab about everything. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but like, if you if you have any of those concerns whatsoever and you're not ready to take the purchase dive in yet, by all means, go download the demo right now, completely for free. It could also kind of help you benchmark where you're at, um, or your system's at to see how runnable it is and stuff like that too. So it's a zero pressure way to see what the game's like and if it's right for you at all. Cool, cool, cool. All right, next one is the Reverse Engine Striker. Uh, still so, so good, it's still great. Free, yes, free, free demo is free. Absolutely, absolutely. This one is from Whiskey Dancer again, nice. Excellent uh, use of the FOD to make the unusual design of the striker. Uh, yes, it is striker. Yep. Pop in front of the blurred background. Yep. Which would be tricky otherwise because of the metal finish of the vessel. Another 100% spaceship money shot. I just realized it's uh, DOF, not FOD. Excuse me. I read it backwards. My, my fault. Uh, depth of field. Depth of field there, of course. Uh, making it pop. Love the details on the ship. Absolutely. Um, you can also see that there's been a little bit of battle that has transpired. I uh, don't know how many of you have noticed this, but when you start taking damage, your emblem on your ship will start peeling off and cracking. So uh, that's how I know that there's damage going on here, because you can see this kind of scuffed up bit, and then the logo itself has been scuffed up. So that ship is on like 90% hole or something. Maybe even a little bit less than that. But very cool action shot using that depth of field. Oh no, Michael, you're totally fine. I read it backwards. It's good. All right, next up, we've got uh, another, we got more spaceships. Mm, love those spaceship shots. And this one, oh, I, oh, ooh, yes. This one's great. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, oh! I, I love how this one has outlaw on the side of it too. Like that just, that just, even, dang. I, I actually like the crop of this as well, but uh, uh, we'll keep it at the original but I love how clean that ship looks and it just looks angry. It just looks mad, right? Like, I, that's why I like this shot. Oh my gosh. Very, very good. Um, and spaceship cannons go burnt. Yep. Excellent shot making the cannons muzzle flash. The hero here also being the only light source casting light on the high detailed spaceship surface. A tattoo dark for a store page screenshot, but 1A contender for how good the VFX and dynamic lighting are in outer space too absolutely i i greatly enjoy how this comes across i've also seen shots where you guys will mix and match the light sources that are happening all around your spaceship so you get like two or three colors blending in with your color palette of your ship and it's just ah oh, it's so crisp it's so delicious i love it i just want to take a bite out of it even though it won't sustain me on a desert island we already had that conversation mm. so good they're pretty tough stickers. Though. Yeah, they are. They're the, the toughest dang stickers. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely a Cylon Freighter. <laughs> that is not a toaster. Also, if we wanted to be... Oh, actually, shoot! You're right! The light... It's, you can't really tell, but the light is actually red. Checks out. Okay. So I, I yield. That checks out. Good call. That's definitely a flying toaster. 100%. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> good call. Good call. That's a very... Very solid uh, observation there. Very nice. <laughs> you guys are fun. Funny thing too, because I have just recently started rewatching the series. Oh yeah, nice, nice. Very good. <clears throat> uh, so let's see. 
Pequise? Over on Twitch, we got a first time chat. Just found the game Demo by accident like an hour ago. Been playing in just a, uh, about the best game I've played since EVE Online launched back in 2003. So this has been past the stream store purchase, bro. Wow, that's some hot craze. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you were also able to swing by the stream and, uh, you know, let us know that you've been uh, pleasantly surprised by your purchase. Uh, that's huge, man. Dude, I'm excited for you. Because if you like where the game's at now, oh man, do we have some surprises in store for you this year and even next when we launch. Oh, wow. Very cool. Very awesome. Man, oh, I'm, I'm like, I am pumped for you, dude. That's so cool. Thank you for, thank you for sharing your message. That is fantastic. So, so say we all right. Okay, enough, enough with the, the, the uh, Battlestar Galactic references. All right, so let's uh, let's uh, keep moving in. And our next shot is <clears throat> right here. Oh my gosh, another nice, crisp, clean shot. Whiskey Dancer at work, Michael tells me. So lots of these shots coming from Whiskey Dancer. And another great use. I mean, you can you can already hear Michael talking and giving this praise about the detail and the light source with the cast shadows uh, emboldening the shapes that are just so, so delightful to experience within the game space that is Everspace 2. He says, the ship looks almost photoshopped as surreal as it looks. The details on the ship are just insane. One of the best shots to demonstrate how much love and affection our art team puts into player ships. Absolutely. Yeah, Matthias has gone to great lengths, great details to ensure that the quality of the ships uh, not only are pleasing to the eyes, but also work as you're changing the modules. Like, can we just give a huge shout out to Matthias for making sure that all of these different vari variations all work together? That is not a small task, okay? That is not, you don't just be like, oh yeah, I'll just like, uh, just make a little space. No, like, dang man, like he's been doing work. And uh, I think that the ships have been coming out really well while each refining their unique silhouettes, right? So like each, each ship class, they generally look in a similar vein. Um, and then outside of that, like then you can get really stylistically crazy uh, by modifying your engines, your body, you know, all the, oh, all, oh, eh, uh, mm, words, words. I'm saying words here. I'm inserting praise and why we should acknowledge Matthias is brilliant. Oh my gosh. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, let's, uh, let's keep looking at a couple more. Isn't this fun? Isn't this great? Just looking at these shots and just like seeing, just, ah, uh, uh, <sighs> okay. <sighs> Calm down. All right. <laughs> All right, so next one, ooh, ooh, yeah, this this one's good too. So we, we've been looking at the detail, uh, but we also, you know, I think it's important to note like how many different environments are also in play here within Everspace 2. I mean, obviously you know that we're planning on uh, showing an ice planet that you'll be going underwater in. We've got a lava planet that, uh, and we've got these nebulas already, and we've got these like uh, biological biome caves that you could go through. And like, oh my gosh, like they're just all the stuff guys. Like it, it's, it's nuts. It's nuts. How much stuff is getting brought to the table here. Um, feels, feels really good. Uh, but each of the sectors are feeling distinct. They're feeling unique. That's what we're aiming for. And it's only going to get better as we continue to tweak and modify. And this shot, uh, it's, it's an entirely different side of Everspace 2, right? Like you're flying out in space most of the time, and in some cases, close quarter combat around asteroids and whatnot, which is intentionally designed that way. We didn't want you to have a realistic portrayal of space, which is mostly empty. Um, we wanted you to have things to engage with, stuff to do. And going to the underside within Union, you know, going on this quest, uh, discovering a character that you haven't run into for a while, uh, it's a lot of fun. Superb lighting and the cave atmosphere in combination with the player ship as scale reference make this shot an excellent proof that Everspace 2 offers some locations that you won't find in any other space game. It looks straight from a blockbuster sci-fi movie. Love it. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. 
So, uh, I like it. I like it a lot. I think that there's so much praise to give the photographers here and how they're just, you know, they're taking these scenes and they're telling so much more of a story than maybe even what meets the eye when you first venture there. Um, just like using these dynamic angles, right? Like it's, if this was just like flat scene, you'd have to make it a really wide pan shot to give it that same sort of effect. But because we've tilted it here, it, it kind of transforms it into almost like the mouth of a giant being that's coming down on you. So that one comes from uh, Dark Chaos. That one comes from Dark Chaos as well. So, so much praise to Dark Chaos. Very good stuff. Uh, any questions yet? Nope, not seeing any questions. That's totally fine. Modularity is hard and making it look and work well is even harder. Yeah, completely, completely agreed. Completely agreed. I, um, I kind of feel bad for some of my requests that I've made to Matthias like way back in the day. Well, what if we do this with the ship and you could do like a customization, blah, blah. Silly Eric, oh my goodness. But no, he knows what he's doing. He, he knows what's up. It's good. Transformers confirmed? No, not, not, not even, no. <laughs> That's not how that works. <laughs> All right, uh, next shot. Ooh, ooh, another crisp, clean hero shot. I'm gonna guess and say that this is also from Whiskey Dancer. But another one of those great details. Very similar. I, in fact, this might be the same. I think this is the same uh, silo. Or er, <clears throat> I think this is the same interceptor. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's just not firing uh, out its muzzle. Yeah, I think that's. I think it's the same one. So it's orange instead of red. So it's not quite, not quite what we thought it was. But I do like that color scheme. I think that comes out really well. Uh, very good stuff. Quick messaging on that. Uh, it's kind of like a Spider-Man Green Goblin reference. Yeah, all right, I see it. Excellent eye for extraordinary color and light. High detailed playership design that you won't see in any other game. My goodness. My goodness. Uh, this next one, I think I even shared. I think I did share this uh, before, but I really like the way that this one was captured. Um, it almost looks like it's a shot out of Everspace 1, in fact. But this is Everspace 2. I do like how that comes together. <laughs> Cylons confirm. Stop it, guys. Stop it. Uh. Yeah, hang on, hang on one second. Sorry. Michael, I sent you a little message. All right. Um, <clears throat> I lost my spot. Oh, no. Oh, no. I lost my spot. Hang on. Let me find it again. Ah, oh, yes. Here we are. The ancients are angry. Love the shot for its action dynamic and unusual VFX in front of an established outer space setting, indicating there's some very strange stuff is going on in Everspace 2. And if you guys have reached certain parts of the story, you know exactly what we're talking about. Uh, and if you're doing like, si like, there's so many details of things that can happen only if you go and do side missions. So if you're just doing the campaign, you're gonna miss certain things. You're gonna miss certain things. Uh, so, but yeah, also know how tiny the spaceships are making your jaw drop how big this ancient actually is in this shot. So it comes out to be quite epic. Yeah, look at all, all these tiny little bees buzzing around. You got this massive floating being in the middle. Oh, got it. Got it, Michael. Excellent. Perfect. Then next up, we've got another uh, cave shot. Let me just pull it up. Ooh, I do like this one. This one uh, actually harkens to more of that like wide shot that I was referring to earlier. I just got to find it. We'll just manually find it. Where's it at? Where's it at? Nope. Yeah, there it is. That's the shot right there. That's the one I'm looking for. This is actually from the tutorial, the opening segments of the game itself. Your first mission um, in Everspace 2 as basically a mercenary. You're helping out GMB. You are the muscle. 
to assist them and guide them. Very, very good. What if we can change our ship modules uh, uh, during flight? Oh my gosh, that's, that's nuts. That would be nuts. <laughs> Making sure I'm not missing something important. Okay, we're good, we're good. All right, so this one, another nice cave shot. I just, I really like how it's it spans across, right? Like it's still giving you that scope. It's still giving you a strong amount of mystery as the initial tutorial is meant to do. It's giving you a glimmer, a glimmer? It's giving you a glimpse as to the type of content you'll experience in the game. It's not gonna just be out in open space. You're gonna be flying inside of environments and you're gonna be doing tasks and stuff like that. Um, nice cave shot. This time, more about exploration at close range could also come right from a blockbuster sci-fi movie, framing, lighting, colors, sense of scale, full score on this one. Brings it all home. Very, very good. Very, very good. And this is also from Dark Chaos. Again! I just, you guys are like guessing on who it is now. This one's a uh, John. Place your bets. Place your bets. 20 credits, Dark Chaos. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> All right, next one we've got is a kind of a butterfly shot, I think is the way that he describes it. Uh, I think it's at the very end. Yeah, here we are. Kind of a butterfly shot. So we actually see two of the same ship, two of the same exact ship, but one's been modified quite heavily. Um, so we have the freelancer ship above, and then we have the redeemer variant below. Butterflies dancing in space, very artsy, simply beautiful. The ships look like sci-fi fantasy creatures doing the dance of mating. Great eye for a transcendent moment in a space game. That comment reminds me of a side mission that can occur in a little game called FTL, where you encounter some NG beings. <laughs> Somebody out there knows exactly what I'm talking about. And to that person, thank you for appreciating this kind of obscure reference. I love you. Mm. Otherwise, let's keep going. Let's uh, let's keep sharing some more of what you guys have been sharing. So good. So good. Oh, oh, ooh. Ooh, this next one. This one's a clever shot. Uh, sometimes, sometimes the cleanest shots are just super split down the middle. Uh, I, uh, not isometric, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Symmetric, symmetric, symmetric bleh, is the word that I'm looking for. Nice, clean, simple. You can basically copy paste by flipping over the two sides. Um, and it's great. It's fantastic. Knock, knock. We're here for a match of chess, epic Blade Runner reference space goosebumps moment here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very good. Man, we're actually kind of getting close to this list. How much time do we... Oh my gosh, we're over time. Guys, I gotta go. My wife's gonna murder me. Oh, whew, I wasn't watching the time. All right, anyway, that's that's gonna be it for the streets. <laughs> but we'll share more screenshots uh, that we pull from Steam and also shots that you share actively in the Discord. Uh, note that when we do share your shots, there's always a chance that you could become the next galactic photographer. What does that mean? It means you get recognition in the Discord that you're really awesome and you have a knack for photography. So that's great. And other news, uh, yeah, I already mentioned that we're doing like these recap videos like three times already. Um, you guys have been awesome. I'm so glad that you were able to swing on by, see some of the new iconography. We'll probably have some more to show next week. Uh, you know, little improvements, little updates, but when we get to this full package for the spring, I think you guys are gonna be really amazed. So thanks for sticking it out, showing up, uh, asking some really great questions and just enjoying the experience or not, you know, if you're if you're not enjoying the experience, it's good so long as you're providing feedback and criticism accordingly on those Steam forums so that we hear your voice and maybe we can do something about it. You know, there's a possibility there. Uh, but otherwise, at this point, I'm just rambling. Guys, I'm just talking because I love you and I don't want to leave you. Ah, oh, it's so great. Uh, but I, I have to go. You guys have been awesome. I have been Eric Schrader, your community ambassador. It's listed right under me. Like literally, it's right there. So you can't forget ever. Don't stop being awesome. And we will catch you in the next stream. I believe Will will find somebody to go follow. So go spread the love. 
with the next streamer we're bouncing over to. Toodles! This is your casual reminder that Everspace 2, in its early access phase, is not going to be at the same price point here, right now, versus when we launch at that 1.0 release. So if you do in fact like what you see, it is advantageous to purchase right now in a more affordable rate. Thank you for listening to this nice little speech that I definitely prepared beforehand.